What's happening? Brian Tong here. I'm back in, you know, a little browner. And welcome to another episode of your favorite panda friendly show. Now, we'd also like to take a moment of silence to remember Bao Bao, the world's oldest panda who passed away this week. Oh, God. I love pandas. All right, it's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple, and we'll start things off with an Apple Byte exclusive right here. Now, according to my well-placed sources, I can confirm what you're all already expecting. Obviously, the next-gen iPhone with the mini dot connector is coming in September, and the 7.85-inch rumored iPad with the mini dot connector as well is coming for sure. But here's the surprise. My sources have also told me in a move that I refused to believe earlier that Apple will indeed be releasing a new version of the current third generation iPad with the use of the new dock connector to push the new standard moving forward alongside the other devices. Now we're expecting the next gen iPhone to be unveiled at the September 12th event, but if the iPads don't make the keynote, my sources say they will still be released this year in time for the 2012 holiday season, but the iPad with just a new dock connector is actually happening. I've also been told that the Apple TV isn't even close from a production standpoint and it won't make the 2012 timeframe that some analysts continue to pound on like we've been saying. Now in some other stories that piggyback on the new iOS devices, Digit Times reports that the 7 inch iPad will begin volume production in September with a target of 4 million units per month to launch before the holidays. Also, USB cable specialist Weister claims to have the sync cable for the next-gen iOS devices that features the smaller dock port connection on one end with this picture they sent out to multiple outlets. And if you're curious about all those iPhone parts flying around, repair site iRescue was able to take the docking port and headphone jack assembly that they showed off last week, then placed it in the alleged iPhone 5 back frame, and they were able to put the pieces together with all of the threading and screw holes lining up perfectly, just like fitting together pieces of a complex puzzle. But forget about what you've seen. If you don't believe any of that, and really guys, you should because that's just the iPhone, maybe you're thinking what Adam Sachs is thinking. Check out this clip about what he thinks the iPhone 5 will be. People only use iPhones to take photos of their food. They're sad and alone, so they use pictures of food to create the illusion of a fulfilling life. With that knowledge, we went back to the drawing board, introducing the iPhone 5. We rethought everything, from big stuff like screen resolution to small details like the size of the screws and the inclusion of a 50 millimeter macro lens. These pictures look so good that nobody would ever imagine you lie awake at night wondering why you can't feel happiness. And within minutes, I had friends telling me how much fun I was having. And you know, for one brief moment, I almost believed in myself. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with him on that. All right, now we mentioned the Apple TV earlier, but that might not be the only TV-based project Apple is working on. According to the Wall Street Journal last week, Apple is in talks with US cable operators about a set-top box that would make it so viewers could watch any show at any time through a cloud-based DVR that would store shows online, and viewers could then start streaming the show minutes after it begins airing live. It's really an ambitious idea, but there's huge challenges before this becomes a reality. Even if Apple is able to sign deals with the big cable operators, individual content owners will also have to give their permission. We finally just saw Hulu Plus get on board with the Apple TV, and CBS, our parent company, has been, let's just say, reluctant to let their content be viewed anywhere else outside of their walls. And you won't see HBO or Showtime jumping on board unless they are getting paid handsomely. So right now, this is kind of what I call a tech unicorn. All right, let's take a break and check out our app of the week. This one is a fun one from Ustream called the BFF app. It's free and it's available for iOS devices right now with an Android version coming soon. Now, it doesn't stand for best friends forever, but instead broadcast for friends. Yay. Now, what's cool about this app is once you connect it to your Facebook account, it lets you stream video live from your iOS device and straight to your Facebook timeline where friends can watch it live and comment on the video. You can also add Instagram-like filters and save the videos to your timeline. It's really simple to use, and if you have something cool to show people or if you think your friends really want to watch you eat your lunch, this is the app for you. All right, guys, now we're still waiting for the final ruling between Apple versus Samsung after closing arguments were made by both sides. Apple called Samsung the iPhone's biggest fan and a copycat. Samsung then also argued that Apple is stifling competition and if they win the case, consumers lose. 
Billions of dollars are at stake here, and it could set a precedent for future cases, so we'll keep you in the know. But one thing you have to know about is AT&T, after they decided to make themselves the tech world's number one target when they announced that FaceTime over cellular on iOS 6 will be only available for people who choose to go with their new mobile share plans. Now, if you're on an individual or family plan right now, it won't matter. You won't get to use the feature. Now, these plans might make sense for families, but they're really made to be more expensive for heavy data users, which is a lot of you. Now, Sprint has already said they will not put any limits on FaceTime over cellular, and we're still waiting for Verizon's position. Then AT&T had the nerve to say since FaceTime is a preloaded app, they don't have to support it. But if it was a downloadable app that's not bundled on the phone, FCC net neutrality laws would force them to allow it to work properly. Two words, bad apple. And now, honestly, I'm considering leaving the carrier with a jerk move like this. Hey, Verizon, let me know what you guys are thinking of doing. So call me, maybe. All right, guys, let's end things on a high note. And we wanted to let you know that the Apple Byte is celebrating its 200th episode, 200 in a few more weeks with a party in San Francisco on September the 7th, Friday night at 111 Minute with, get this, free drink specials, over 300 giveaways from Jellyskins and InCase, iTunes gift cards, and a raffle, yes, a raffle, for the best tablet on the planet. And if you can unscramble these letters, you know what it is. All right, we're also doing a shooting of a skit that you could be a part of too, so why wouldn't you go? So we hope to see you there, and you can follow my Twitter for more details. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send us your emails to theapplebyte at cnet.com. I'll start catching up to them. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you next time for another bite of the apple.